Good morning, everybody. FSC Trucking. Woke up this morning. Today's Tuesday, day after Columbus Day. We got to deliver this truck down here to the Denver airport. Couldn't deliver it yesterday, you know, because Columbus Day. You know what's funny? Everybody craps on that holiday. If, but if you went to the bank yesterday, you would have found out real quick they're celebrating full heartedly because they didn't go to work. Let's go ahead and get this day started. So I got Orwell behind me. Orwell's my 1984 Peterbilt 362 cab over. And we got this half a truck we got to deliver. Meaning half a truck because, well, let's show you. This thing kind of works like a truck tractor with the exception of... I can't believe I just saw. This thing works like a truck tractor with the exception of it doesn't have a fifth wheel. See, if it has a fifth wheel, it hip hops back and forth, you know, like a regular truck would. What they want to do, I guess, is they're wanting to use it more of a solid vehicle that still articulates. Think a wheel loader. So what they do is they unbolt the trailer off of it directly. See on the back right there on a the frame, there's 16 bolts and two big, huge alignment pins. They'll bolt the articulated part on it right there. It doesn't push itself like an articulated wheel loader, but it just drives like a truck, but it doesn't have the, you know, it'll do the side to side motion, but not up and down motion like the fifth wheel does. So that's what it does. There's a broom that goes behind this unit and a snow plow that goes on it. That's about all I know about it. The other thing I do know is I picked it up in Chilton, Wisconsin, and then uh, brought it to Mini. I brought it to Minneapolis from there, and they showed it at that airport for how was it Tuesday? So I dropped it off Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, picked it up Friday, and then uh, now I'm over here in uh, Denver to drop it off the airport. Far as I know, that's where it's going to stay. So we stayed here at the TA at this uh, so-called reserved parking area because well when I got here there was absolutely no room to park so I parked here the other reason I stayed here two days rather than one is because uh, this right here nobody could park in the space next to me so to me it was worth the 20 bucks to not have somebody crash into the truck considering we were stuck here so with that I'm gonna head and get up inside the TA try to find something to eat the only thing over here is a Burger King a Popeyes and a, a Pizza Hut um, Burger King closes at ridiculously early hours. They might be open now, but I can't stand Burger King breakfast. Popeyes probably isn't closed, isn't open yet. I don't want Popeyes for breakfast. I'm kind of stuck here. So, I don't know, I'll figure something out. They're going to have something small to eat. Worst case, I'll get a couple eggs and, a, and an orange juice. All right, with that, let me go ahead and get that done. I'll talk about what I got inside. All righty, boys and girls, just got back from inside the TA. I got my orange juices. That's it. Burger King had breakfast only. If you wanted a burger, you got to wait till 1030. There's no salads available. Nothing else is open. Plenty of potato chips and beer available, though. Ugh. I got to get fuel, too. I think I was going to bounce over to the Sap Brothers quick and get fuel. But I will say this, though. On the last few videos, I was talking about my green APU that I got. It's a little unit running underneath here under my cab. I did notice when I was editing those videos, it sounds a lot louder, my microphone on top of my thing right here. My microphone picks it up a lot louder, especially on the inside. I don't know why, but I know when I edit sitting behind a wheel, I use my headphones and it sounds a lot louder on my headphones than it does in real life. So I don't want people to get discouraged or thinking, oh my God, it's so loud. In actuality, it's not. I wake up in the morning, I wonder if it's even running, except you can feel it a little bit. But I absolutely love the thing. It keeps me nice and warm. I haven't really needed the air conditioning except for yesterday. It was uh, just touching 80 degrees and uh, I could hear the cab tanking, you know, the aluminum roof making noise. But I was nice and cool and comfy sitting up in there getting my editing done. I got two videos done, both edited and uploaded. So that's a lot of work for a guy in a truck with a computer, believe it or not. Anyway, just wanted to touch base on that. So with that, let me go ahead and fire Orwell up, get a little bit of, actually the heat's already in the engine. Never mind. Fire it up, get the air built up, and get on out of here. Let's go go over to Sap Brothers, get some fuel, and then go deliver this little half a truck.
And just like that, thanks to a little heating assistance with a three-cylinder Kubota, 400 horsepower, or Caterpillar power comes to life. No cussing, no fussing, no pissing and moaning. So this tour idle right up like it's been running all day. Now I just gotta build up the air pressure, charge the air to the trailer, set up my GoPros, let's get out of here. Fuel next. Alrighty. Let's get this day started. Seatbelt on that some of you guys think I don't wear. Truck's an 84 model, flat belts only. Let's get one of my orange juices in me now, along with an Advil and a blood pressure pill. Hope I get a sandwich or a salad at the Sap Brothers. One of those, two of these. That goes from my back. I hurt myself on my razor last weekend out in the dunes. Jumped it way too high on stop crushed springs. Plan is that thing's going to send in the shocks out to shock therapy. Either that or I'm going to bring it down to them there in Arizona plan on going to Glamis in about a month so might swing by and let them do it I had a pinched nerve I just sore when I wake up now it's no big deal I think the nerve part of it's over I know for a fact I bruised my tailbone all right kill the high idle hit this brake knob you guys go ahead and hit that like and subscribe huh I try to do that joke, we're not leaving until you do. Sometimes I think it might work. <laughs> Alright, let's get out of here. And after we unload, load out the window down. It's flat top out there pulling that bull rack. I love them flat top peats. They look awesome. 379 too. Looking good. Damn, I like that look. I missed my 379. Should have never sold it. Oh man. I know somewhere around here is a blue beacon. So I'm thinking after there's no plan for me to get a load yet. Yesterday being the holiday, Columbus Day, everybody takes the day off while cursing the holiday. Funny how that works. I said that earlier. But. Anyway, there was no freight to pick up, or no plan, I should say. So maybe it'll be a plan by the time I get out of here. residual oil on the on the rear wheels from uh, when uh, slid the axle shafts out. Previous few videos back, we had to put differentials in the truck. So it took the axles out to get them in, obviously. He cleaned it up pretty good, but Nothing washes as good as a truck wash. 
my dude Jackson, he was up on an air everywhere with a with a steam jenny, you know, a hot air or hot water cleaner. Still got some residuals, so not a big deal. Take care of it. He did a real good job. This truck was nasty when it first came out. There's only so much he can do. Yikes, so I need all the way to the right from where I'm at right here. Wait for the next light cycle, might be able to make it. I don't know of any cheap fuel around here. Pretty low. I don't really want to push it too hard, or too far, I should say. jealous this load makes me wish I, maybe I should have brought the Harley with me but then I would have went riding I wouldn't have got any work done Brothers, I, if I remember right, back in the days of Park and View, Sap Brothers had it and TA didn't. Because I kind of remember being sitting out here a while. And sitting at the Sap Brothers because of that. How long ago was that? I wonder where our other two drivers are at too. I don't have their phone numbers or way to get a hold of them. Because we got two other Whitmire trucks bringing stuff here too. Got a, with the broom trailer for that little truck. A plow for the other trucks. They got a eagle truck wash over here. 537? Holy crap. Somewhere up north, up the north in Colorado, I thought I seen it for like. 480 something. Well, we're in Denver itself, so. I wasn't sure if I had a stop sign or not. I didn't. Romantic sparking only. What is that? A strip club? Dirty bookstore. Now if that's a fuel cost here, I hate to say what I hate to see what is a TA. Used to get a group discount at the TAs, but I don't know if we do anymore. Last I asked, they didn't know.
right there, 999.98, Gotta go in and get my food anyway. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, why wow, that's bright. Check it out, boys and girls. Got my salad and egg cup. And up inside there, they got so much better than a TA. Ain't even funny. Granted, TA got the Burger King and the Popeyes. Probably a nicer lot, though. What we'll do is we'll get over, get over to where we got to unload. We'll eat there. There's a reason I had to pull forward. See that cross country truck where he pulled forward? Somebody tries to get out from next to me and wipe the hood off the truck, which I don't already have, so I don't have metal to spare. I probably should have scrubbed the glass a little bit for you guys. Same blue rack from the PA. We found out there ain't no vittles at the TA. Just wanna eat that trashy burger can. Last I was here, it's been many, many years. I drove through not that long ago, actually, but we didn't stop. We just kept on hauling ass. Jen wanted to see the stadium where the Avalanche played. We came through with the, with the uh, pickup truck, the travel trailer. different granted we're at the truck stops you know I don't know what downtown like the city center or whatever looks like but right in this area man it's it's definitely gone to the dogs on green hour only so we're sitting here waiting for I guess them to finally go can't make a right on red that stinks good south
found an FLD right there, a gray one, flatbed. Oh, I keep my eyeball on Marketplace all the time, looking for stuff. Stuff just shows up. that long ago coming through Denver Airport was a layover between uh, here and Honolulu went to visit Sean out there took Matt and Jen with me and kind of sort of came back with a car <laughs> dots and my sons Pretty, you know, coming into Denver Airport and leaving Denver Airport, unless you want to start climbing them mountains. Climbing the mountains, you fly it over them. As soon as you get out of Denver, start heading straight west. The amazing thing was, it didn't take long for you wound up over California and flying at that altitude. You actually start recognizing where you are. Coolest thing of all, I have it somewhere. I'm not going to be able to find it when I edit this though, because I know it's at home. Because when you're coming into Honolulu, there's only so many places planes can go. They start kind of flying next to one another. They start look, looking like they're racing. Like there's an aircraft off your 
off your wing. I don't know, thousand, a thousand, probably more than that, thousand yards. I don't know. You could plainly see an aircraft close. Like you could read the, read everything on them, read his tail numbers. In fact, what's the person worried about that dead deer for? Like I said, it's, yeah, Denver. Um, but yeah, you can see them planes. They're like they're racing it. Then they peel off because obviously they're going to a different island. We went to uh, Oahu, visited Pearl Harbor. If you have the opportunity to go, don't skip out. Go on a go on the tour of Hickam Field. It's hard to make, hard to imagine what was there back in them days. The bullet holes are still in the glass. That's no joke. The bullet holes are still in the glass for the uh, the hangers. there to see the Arizona bring tissues. You will get emotional standing over, standing over that ship. But he got these big apartments going and then old stockyards or pens. So those will go by the wayside. They're building high-end homes. They're not going to have that over there for very much longer. You watch. You guys will pack your, pack your stuff now. What's it like to live here? From what I see, terrible. This is just my personal opinion. I ain't trying to insult nobody, but from what I see of uh, just around, this ain't for me. I'll tell you that right now.
land up here, all of a sudden it goes to a four lane. be such a, a boom out here in the outskirts of Denver. Quite surprised. parking garage for the airport, I'm guessing that is. There's the big P on it. backward way to get to the airport, I'll tell you that. But obviously we're going to the maintenance side of things. Motor pool, whatever you want to call it. So that makes sense. way to get here. in Denver. What's California moving to Denver? I mean, Colorado's almost like California in some ways.
Um, Alrighty, boys and girls, we are good to go. I pulled off to the side after I got unloaded. Our other driver just got escorted in. So with that, we're gonna go back to the truck stop. And we're gonna wash the truck. Then we'll wait for a load. Dispatch knows I'm here, knows I'm empty, so we're good to go. Everybody was happy with the delivery. Everything went smooth. The other driver with the plow got here earlier than me. I got here about 30 minutes early. The other driver right on time, so that works. Same escort that brought me in, brought me out, is also the same escort that brought the other drivers in, so we're good to go. Everybody's happy. Truck made it, good to go. So now, we're going to hit it again charge the air real quick trailer takes a little bit to air up sometimes it needs the airbags to add air to it although I did park here maybe about 20 30 minutes ago I finished my salad I pulled off the side here and I ate my salad while I was waiting on my escort naturally the escort got here I was almost all the way done but not all the way It's all well and good. So now we're going to find our little, follow our little Google Maps and get on out of here. I know you're waiting for it. only gives that kind of coal when you first start it up. After that, it won't do it anymore. I don't know why it does that, but when you first fire them up and take off, you can roll coal. One pull. After that, you're done. And it just does like normal. Also, and I know not everybody follows each and every video, I'm blowing out of one stack. The right side stack, it's fake for now. The reason for that is when we hooked up the APU, the right side exhaust was in the way. So we had to put it elsewhere. So I just deleted the right side exhaust at the Y pipe, welded a patch on the pipe itself. So the stack just goes along for the ride for the look for the time being. I had half a mind to take it off, but decided against it I'm still on the fence on that I guess leave comments what do you think I should do until I re until I replace working exhaust on the right side should I leave the stack be or should I take it off and just leave the stack stanchion hang there you know the the, the bracket that holds it up what do you think leave a comment take it off or leave it on Obviously, the best answer is rebuild the exhaust. But between now and the end of this month, I'm going to be extremely busy, so I don't think that's going to be an option for me. I got other work at my shop I have to get done, and I got to keep running until it's time to head to California and go see Matt and go take the Razor out to Glamis along with Sean and his Jeep, so. I need to keep moving, and with uh, gas prices going up like they are, 
and me dragging a 20, uh, sorry, a 41 foot trailer with two vehicles in it and a Hemi powered Dodge, it's gonna be a lot of money. I've been editing these videos live, by the way. Um, I edited the last, well, since we put the diffs in the truck, that video, uh, all those, that video all the way to this one, most likely including this one, I'm editing live as I go. I know you guys like the more current content like that. It does, it's not always easy for me to do that. I have to have the time to sit around and do the editing. Usually I'll, usually I'll film and then I'll, oh yeah, yeah, I can't even talk today. Usually I'll film the loads and then edit them after the fact at home. But I had all this time to kill with this load having to wait to unload it. So I certainly had the time to do the editing. So unless they get a load for me today that I have to leave and you know, skedaddle and go get straight away, I'll start to get uh, the downloads out of my cameras from today and I'll start edit editing them this afternoon and then I'll get it out there according to the schedule that I have set this video should drop Sunday this upcoming Sunday today of course is Tuesday I've already got in the bag as of right now granted i'm talking to you guys in the future while i'm back in here in the past but as of right now i got tuesday's drop done thursday's drop done saturday's drop done today's tuesday that'll come out in the afternoon i've been changing that up dropping in the afternoons it seems to change some things Just like that one on TV, Carbonaro. So yeah, I visited my grandparents on the Carbonaro side and visited the Festrek side. And that might be the last time in my life I ever go to them graves. You never know. See, my grandparents aren't there the way I believe things are. I'm not a deeply religious guy, meaning I don't wear it on my sleeve. And I certainly don't preach to you. But I believe that my grandparents look down from heaven upon us, and I've touched base on that in previous videos. My grandmother, I feel, sit high with a bottle of uh, seltzer water. 
It happened one other time. Somebody came up to me and gave me a thing of seltzer water and then everything worked out perfectly from that day on. So sometimes I believe, I believe, not sometimes, I believe that they look down upon us from heaven and let us know at times that things will be okay. They'll send you messages in ways that you'll never know or you'll figure out no one else will be able to figure it, but you will. And it just hits you like a brick. So, you know, there's no need to go to the grave. I could sit in this truck driving down the road and say a prayer. I don't have to say it on camera. I don't have to drag everybody to pray with me. I just say a little prayer. And I'm grateful for what I've got. should really be grateful, you know, because don't get me wrong, I, I have a lot of crap going on. I got a lot of stresses in life. And I've been being very good at getting rid of a lot of my stresses, too. I've been good. I've been better at that. I've learned better to take time off. Force it, in fact, sometimes. To some people's dismay or displeasure. Um, opportunity came to hang out with my oldest son. I did. We had an awesome time. He literally spent like two weeks with his old man, and he had a great time. So, you know, I was able to get some work done during that time, obviously. And, but when we went to Silver Lake, I literally said, F it, let's go. And I took most of Friday off, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, most of the day. So, you know, but I had an epic time with my, with my oldest son, and that was what we need to do. And I believe that that's what's important. One day I'm not going to be here and my sons are left to take on with what I leave behind. Should they want to pick up the mantle with the trucks, the shop, whatever, I, who knows? Matt may actually grab a whole full force and want to take over from, from me in time. My older son, probably not. He'd be a better money manager than, than me or even Matt, most likely, but, but Matt would probably thrive in, in this environment with uh, in, in time. Now somebody commented, you might be able to pick it up now, or sometime between now we get to the truck stop. When I did the diff, someone no thought they heard a whine out of my driveline. I wasn't sure if it was transmission or driveline, but I was told that this model of transmission is notorious for being loud. And it has been getting louder since it was brand new, but that noise has been there for a while. I watched my temp gauge doesn't get too hot, but it gets hotter than I think I would like. But it always did. The old one was the same. But I did get oil for it. Synthetic 50 weight supposed to go in there. I did get oil for it. Didn't get a chance to change it yet. Or I didn't even get the oil. It's still sitting in Peterbilt. They ordered some for me. And I have extra from when I put the trans in. It takes about five gallons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain the oil out of it, midway, stick a sample cup in there, and I'm gonna send it down to Badger to do a sample and let me know if we got problems. But it, it runs fine. It always was slow shifting when cold, since brand new, that's nothing new original transmission did that and this transmission did that from literally the day I put it in. So long story short, it doesn't act funny. Oh, really?
time this ramp has its own lane. Gives you plenty of time to start moving left to let you go into the Sap Brothers. But then you need this left right here. As we found out earlier this morning. in the Mississippi. They're very difficult to find out here, I was told back in the day. I don't know if that's still true. The 17.5s, especially 18 ply, so they can handle the weight that we use, that we pull. We're supposed to carry them and have a tire go out out here. It's like the last one I had. I didn't even put that out on video yet. I still didn't edit that. I had a tire go out on me. I think I hit a police spike strip like the leftover from when they spiked somebody like one of the straws the aluminum straws flew out i think i hit one that was left over because it poured the tire it's sticking a big ass screwdriver in the hole when i lucked out in illinois they had a bridgestone version of these tires which i'd really like the michelins with the old tread pattern if you know the new tread pattern you you know that those are junk. Is he taking that car carrier apart to load it? Anyway, prefer the bridge to the Michelin's over the Bridgestones, but you get what you get when you got nothing. So I put two new ones on there. Kept the old one as a spare. And I have two in stock. I figured I would just carry my new ones if I need them. What he's got going on? He had a little setup with a camera and his phone holder, like he's doing some kind of podcast or something. Like the free spots are all here, so. Well, man, let me in the truck wash. Filthy pig. <laughs> 